Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. I'm taking a pause on developing new data visualizations from climate change data to spend a little bit of time talking about principles of reproducibility. We've spent a lot of time talking about writing reproducible code, right? We make these R scripts. I've talked about putting them up to GitHub. As I talked about in the last episode, that's great, but it's only part of the story. Another important part of the story is keeping track of the software we're using. And so in the last episode, we talked about a package called rnv, which keeps track of our R packages for us. One of the challenges with rnv as a tool is that it only keeps track of R packages, right? It doesn't actually keep track of R itself. It won't keep track of, say, what mother version you're using um, or what uh, other tools you might be using uh, to, to run your project and to write your paper, right? And so the example that I used was that when you create an R Markdown document, that gets rendered into a Word document or HTML or PDF using a tool called Pandoc. Well, RN can't keep track of Pandoc. So what are we to do to keep track of things like our R version, Pandoc version, and perhaps also our R packages? Well, in today's episode, I am going to share with you another strategy, which is to use a set of tools from Conda. So Conda is a package manager Initially, I think, developed for Python, but um, like all good things, it's no longer just for Python, but also incorporates things for R and all sorts of other packages. The mother software package that my lab develops is written in C++, and you can get a latest version of that from Conda uh, to run on your computer, making the installation just super easy because it keeps track of all the dependencies that you will need. Before we jump into installing and using Conda, I'm gonna create a branch that was based on the state of the repository before I brought in our end. And so as we've seen in previous episodes, I can go to my history. I can then come to the last commit before I initialize the RN project. And I will click on these angle um, uh, brackets. And so I'm now going to be browsing the repository at this state. And so you can see here, there's nothing in here about our end, right? So now I can create a branch from this position, right? And so I will now call this conda. And so I'm gonna create branch conda from this commit, great. And so now I have the conda branch as well as the main branch. So coming over to our studio, I can come to my Git tab and do a pull on that. It will bring down a new branch, the conda branch for me. And so I can then come and instead of main, I want conda. And so it switched to new branch conda. So I restarted our studio because when I initially started it for today's episode, it had our end. And so we had a little bit of dialogue down here in the console. So I restarted it because I no longer have our end in my directory. I no longer have that .r profile file that we had before. Uh, and so now when we've restarted R, that goes away. Of course, I still have this our env directory in here because in our env, there's these two directories, library and staging that the git ignore file was ignoring, right? So I want to ignore rnvn on this branch. So I'll go ahead to my git ignore and I'll then add rnv there. I'll save that and close git ignore. Go ahead and refresh. And now I see that I've got a modified version of git ignore. I'll stage this and commit it to ignore a directory uh, from the uh, rnv branch. And maybe I'll just say ignore the our end directory from that branch, okay? So we'll commit that and close. Now everything is cleaned up and we're ready to move on and use Conda. Because in Conda, I'm going to install R as well as a variety of different packages. That's gonna make things a little bit funky here in our studio, right? So I could try to install Conda and all the different stuff here in our studio using the terminal window, but I think that's just gonna get a little too messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and quit out of RStudio and do everything in a terminal. So I'm gonna start at the Conda website. So docs.conda.io will bring you here. I wanna to go to mini Conda. So there's Anaconda and mini Conda. Anaconda is, as I understand it, you basically download everything, even stuff you might not need. Mini Conda, you get the minimum, <laughs> and then you install stuff as you need it. I've always used mini Conda, and that's what we're gonna use here. So looking down through this page, we see a variety of links for installing the version that you need for your computer. I'm doing this on a Mac. Basically everything I'm saying here for a Mac will also work well for Linux. If you're working on Windows, things are gonna be a bit different, um, if only because not all of the software that's developed 
uh, is developed for Windows, right? And so all the bioinformatics software we use at a minimum is gonna be supported on Linux and often <laughs> also for a Mac. And so the safest is to do all this in Linux. I've got a Mac, so I'm gonna do it on a Mac. But you know, if you're on Windows and would like to see how uh, this might work with a Windows computer, let me know and maybe we can figure something out. But I'm gonna proceed with the Mac. Again, things are very similar uh, for a Linux computer. So I'm gonna start with the Miniconda 3 Mac OS Intel version PKG. So this is a GUI, a graphic interface. So I'll go ahead and download this. So I'll double click on this. And this gives me the dialogue that kind of steps me through everything. Uh, you could do the same thing, but at the command line, uh, I just will do this with the GUI to show you all what it looks like. But basically at the command line version, you would download a version that ends in .sh. And then a command line, you would type bash whatever sh that's often going to be useful on a linux computer because you're not going to have ready access to a graphical interface like i do here on my mac all right so this went through without a hitch go ahead and click close there i can then go ahead and delete the installation package so now if i do conda hyphen hyphen version very good so it says conda 4.12 i know there's actually a 4.13 out there so i want to go ahead and update that now so to do that we'll do conda update and then we'll do hyphen n and base. And I'll describe what the, all this means here in a second. Minus C defaults and then conda. And so what this means is I want to update conda, this last word here. Um, and the dash n base is the name of the environment that I want to update it in. So one of the things that happens is that when we start a new terminal, it automatically puts us into a base mode, a base conda environment, right? And so we're gonna modify the base environment. And this dash C defaults means get conda from the defaults channel, okay? Uh, so there's stuff that can be updated and I think it's gonna go up to 13. So we'll go ahead and say yes. And again, we can do conda hyphen hyphen version and we see we're in 413, excellent. Now we wanna go ahead and, and install Mamba. So Mamba is a tool that's basically the same thing as Conda. It's a rewritten version of Conda and Mamba runs a lot faster, which is great for working and building environments, for installing software. There is one special place where we'll still need to use Conda, but Mamba is great and so we need to install it. So we'll go ahead and do Conda install uh, and then we can do N base and then I can do hyphen C Conda hyphen forge. So that's a different channel. So we use defaults to get Conda. We're gonna use Conda forge to get Mamba and a few other tools. And then we'll go ahead and do Mamba. Again, it wants to tell me what's going on, so I'll say yes. And so now I should be able to do Mamba version, oh, Mamba version, and I've got Mamba 0.24 with Conda 4.13. Great, and so now we've got our environment, our base environment all set up. Now what I wanna do is create an environment for a project that is this climate visualization project, right? So to create that environment, we're going to use Mamba. Right, so we'll do mamba create hyphen n viz. So we're gonna create an environment called viz. And then there's gonna be three different channels that we're gonna frequently use. And so first uh, that we'll use is conda forge. We'll do hyphen c for bioconda. So bioconda is a channel that's got a lot of bioinformatics software. And then we'll do r. And so r has a lot of r packages. So we're gonna install the r software itself but we'll also get those packages like say Tidyverse or uh, uh, Plotly, things like that. Um, and we'll get those packages from the R channel, whereas R itself, I think comes from Conda Forge. And so now what I wanna give it are the names of the software I want. And so the R software that we want is gonna be R hyphen base, and I'm gonna say equals four. Uh, and so four means give me that version of R. So four is kind of the base level. So we'll, we'll work with that. Maybe we'll do 4.1 and then we'll also do a package. So let's do the tidyverse. And so all of the R packages you can get by doing R hyphen and then the name of the package, right? So R hyphen tidyverse, R hyphen plotly and so forth. So if we're not sure, we can always Google it, right? And so I will do conda tidyverse. And so this then shows me R tidyverse. So I'll go ahead and click on this first link. This then shows me R packages, R tidyverse, right? So that R hyphen tidyverse, right? And if I were to do say a dplyr, I would see that there's R hyphen dplyr. And if I were to do something like mother, so mother is the software my lab develops, and you can see it's available under Bioconda. 
great. So I'm going to do r hyphen tidyverse. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the version, so the 1.31, which is the current version of the Tidyverse. It asks me to confirm the changes. There's a whole bunch of stuff that it's got to install to get the Tidyverse. Again, the Tidyverse is a meta package. It's a package of a bunch of packages. All those packages have dependencies, so we're getting all that stuff. So we'll go ahead and say yes. So that took a few minutes to install everything. We see at the bottom here, it says to activate this environment, use Mamba Activate Viz to activate it, do Mamba Deactivate. Um, I've never done what they say. Typically, this is the only place where I use conda. I'll do conda activate viz. So the way I was taught was that this is the only place you use conda. If you've done it with Mamba, let me know uh, what you find. Um, I'm going to stick with what I've done before because I know it works. So I'll do conda activate viz. And so now I can look at the environments that I have. I can do Mamba env list. So Mamba environment list. And so now I see I have two environments, right? So I've got the viz uh, that I just made as well as the base. And I can see that I'm in viz because there's this star here, right? Um, and so what I want to show you is how these environments differ, right? So if I do echo dollar sign path, that is going to show me all of the directories that my computing operating system looks for different pieces of software that I might run from the command line. And so it goes in order, right? And so what you'll find is that the very first thing in here is my mini conda environment viz, right? If I were to do which r, it shows me that the version of r that I am using is in mini conda, right? And if I did r hyphen version, that this is using 4.1.3. If I were to do conda deactivate, I could then do mamba env list. I now see I'm in base, right? And if I again do echo dollar sign path, I see that the first element in the path uh, is mini conda, but it's the base bin, right? Um, and that's basically where conda and mamba are being stored, right? Um, whereas up here I had ENVs in environments viz bin, right? So there's a little bit of a difference, right? And so then if I were then to do uh, which R, it's pulling that from usual local bin R, right? And R version, remove that space, I see I've got 4.2, right? So again, we're creating different environments that are using different pieces of software, okay? It's a lot like what we saw for RENV in the last episode. The main difference, however, is that RENV only works on R packages, whereas uh, Conda Mamba works with all software and all packages. Let's go back to our viz. So we'll do Conda activate viz. Again, we have to do Mamba env list, and we can then see that we're in our viz environment. And then if I do R to go into R, I can see that. And then I can do find.package on tidyverse. So what I find is that it's actually using the version of tidyverse that I have installed on my computer, the, the general computer. So if I do lib paths, I see that my mini conda version is actually getting seen second after uh, the general version, right? So that's not good. So let's go ahead and quit out of that. So actually I want to create an R profile in my climate viz. So I'll go ahead and move there. We'll do CD desktop climate viz. And again, you can see the invisible files by doing ls hyphen a. And I see here that I don't have a dot R profile file. So I'll go ahead and create one. I'll do atom dot R profile. I'm doing this in Atom, but you could do it in any text editor. Atom's just easier to work with than Nano. The key is that it needs to be a text editor. So we'll do dot lib paths. And again, that's a function, and I'm going to give it the arguments, a vector of arguments, an argument of a vector of paths, right? So I'll give it the C function, and then I'll do dot lib paths. Again, function, and I want the second seat. That was my mini conda. Again, you do what works for your system, right? And so you'll you may not have to do this if you didn't get the things flipped. I've been on Linux systems where this doesn't happen. Mac seems to be doing it. I don't know. But anyway, you want to get your paths in the right order. So we'll go ahead and save this and then come back to the terminal and start R. And then we can do dot lib paths, open close parentheses, and we get the right order. Now we can do find dot package on tidyverse. And very good. It's grabbing it now from our viz environment. Again, this takes a little bit of work to get things set up. So what if we wanted to install another package like GG Animate? Well, let's go ahead and quit out of here. So we'll go ahead and install GG Animate. So I'll do, I'll do Mamba install hyphen n viz. Again, we're installing it into the viz environment. 
and then the channel, um, I'm gonna put all of them in. Uh, I'll do conda forge uh, hyphen C bio conda hyphen C R. Um, it, it looks in the order of these different directories and then RGG animate. Again, it goes through the same process and asks if you wanna change things, yes. And again, I can come into R and do find.package uh, gg animate and it's in my uh, proper location, right? And just to make sure everything works, we could always do library tidyverse, that's good, and then library gg animate, and that works as well, right? And so it's suggesting adding gifski or AV uh, and then starting over. So this raises an important point. I have found that if you want to install a package in R when you're using Mamba or Conda, you don't want to install it from within R, okay? That's a key difference from R and also, I have found that it does not work well to mix RENV with Conda or Mamba. I've just run into big headaches with that. Maybe you'll have a different experience, but I've really struggled, right? So if I want GIFSKI, I need to install GIFSKI into my Viz um, environment. So I'll go ahead and quit out of here, right? And we could keep installing things. I think we also had a Plotly package and maybe some other packages that we used along the way. But this process of installing things, um, you know, at the command line like this, it works, but it doesn't lend itself very well to restarting or recreating a, a environment uh, to run an analysis. What I'd rather do is perhaps create my environment from a file that I can store in my project. And so that's what we're gonna do next. I'll go ahead and do Atom to open up a text editor. And so I'm going to save this as a configuration file. So I'll say config.yml. It'll be a YAML file. So the first line I'll say name viz, then I'll do channels and then tab over and I'll do conda forge, bioconda r. I think also in here we might want defaults. Great. And then I want dependencies, right? And so now I'll do r hyph equals 4.1. Uh, that specifies the version, uh, tidyverse, equals 1.3.1. Um, we could also then do gg animate. Um, I forget what version we had. Um, if you're not so concerned about the version, then you can leave that off, right? Uh, we could also then put in plotly. Uh, and I realized that I'm putting in the R packages, uh, not the actual conda names, right? So this should be R base, this should be R tidyverse, R gg animate, and R plotly. I'll go ahead and save that because what we're gonna do is use this to create a new environment. So first I need to get rid of my viz environment. So I'll do mamba env list. And again, I see I've got that viz there. So I'll do conda deactivate. And again, mamba env list shows me that I've got my base environment and my viz, but viz is no longer active. I can then do mamba env remove hyphen n viz. And so what that's gonna do is remove the viz environment uh, from my entire system. So that dash n viz, that dash n is the name of the environment. This then says it's going to remove all packages in the environment that's listed out there. Very good. And again, if I do mamba environment list, all I have is my base, right? So now I can do mamba env create hyphen f config.yml. Uh, and I forgot that I don't wanna just tab over, but I need hyphens uh, to start each line. Uh, to be proper YAML. So we'll go ahead and add that, save that, return, try again, and there we go. So I was missing those hyphens there. Again, I can do conda activate viz. I'm now in my environment, so I can do mamba env list with the activated viz environment. And as we've seen, if I do which r, it's there, r version, again, 4.1.3, and we're in good shape. And if I fire up R, because I changed that .r profile and that doesn't go anywhere, that stays. If I do .lib paths, I now see I've got, yeah, my mini conda path first and uh, my system-wide library path second. So that if I do find .package uh, tidyverse, it pulls up my mini conda version, okay? So, and then we would continue to work. And if you wanted to um, add another uh, package, you could come back to your config YAML file, add your dependencies like we did here, tear down the environment, recreate it, and then proceed. 
Alternatively, what you could do is you could you could also do that uh, Mamba install syntax at the command line to add individual packages as you go. Just make sure that you're also updating this config YAML file because what we can now do is we can go back to our terminal. Of course, I see that my uh, conda uh, branch there is red telling me that there's things that have been changed, right? So the, the beauty of this is that how I can commit uh, these changes for my R profile and my config YAML file so that you can get the exact software that I have. Not just the R packages, but also the R version. If we're doing other analyses, say you're using uh, Mother or you're using Pandoc or any other of these pieces of software, you will be telling your end user what they need and, and helping them to get that so that they can run the analysis just as you have it, all right? So it's a bit more work, I find, than RENV, but um, I feel better about it, right? That I'm creating an environment that somebody else can use directly and that we can really control all of the software, not just the R packages. And to me, that's a win. So if you're doing an analysis that only uses R, um, then cool, use RENV. But I find that if you're doing more things than just R packages, then I think it really is worth pursuing and using Conda. Something that we'll talk about in a future episode is a really powerful tool called SnakeMake. Um, and so SnakeMake works really well with these types of environments. Again, you know, it used to be that Conda was known for only working with Python packages, but really you can maintain so much more software using Conda and Mamba uh, than just Python. And I think it's a really great asset for a reproducible workflow and would encourage you uh, to work with this. Uh, you know, it's, it's not easy necessarily. There's a little bit of friction to getting going, but there's a lot of people out there doing things that can help you out if you run into a problem. Certainly leave me a note down below in the comments if you have any questions or things you'd like me to follow up on in a future episode. All right, well, like I said, give this a shot and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.